到处收集，全世界到处收集，然后把世界各国的那个，像雪地安徽啦、荷兰的大白花啦，什么世界各国、美国的一大堆的兰花收集到台湾来，然后他跟他要花粉，他跟他要花粉，台湾人就会给，而且到处都是育种家。With decades of breeding experience, Taiwan has more varieties of moth orchids than any other country. Whatever color, size, and angle of slant, and however picky the customer, Taiwan has every imaginable strain of moth orchid, making it one of the plant's most important exporters. Wu Shulin Sugar Factory in Tainan County. Is part of a state-owned company that was the first organization to standardize and mass-produce the moth orchid. Because Japan, their moth orchid, they sell to the market is very big. We see this opportunity, and it's close to us. Japan, they produce moth orchid. They start from the seed stage, and they continue to grow. The conditions there are not as good as in Taiwan. So, we find that we can grow the moth orchid in Japan in a shorter time frame. So, we grow it in the fall and bring it to the market. We bring it to the market to grow it in the market. We bring it to the market to grow it in the market. Moth orchids require high temperatures in order to grow. Once mature, however, they can flower in lower temperatures. As major buyers such as Japan and many European countries have cooler climates, seedlings can be cultivated in Taiwan and then sold to local growers in these countries for further cultivation and resale. This is the most economic and efficient approach. TSC's success in exporting orchids created a chain effect. As one entrepreneur after another ventured into the industry and began mass-producing orchid seedlings, Jen Wade's War of Yixin Biotechnology started off in 1978 as an advisor to fellow orchid growers. He sold his plants in the domestic market, gradually expanding production till he could begin exporting. Hobby growers wishing to go global required an entirely new concept of operations. 以前的企业者实在是要找新奇的，哦，人家没有的，只有我有的，一颗花还可以卖到一百万。那现在是说，哎，我哪一个区块的要的是什么花，可以去大量供应这个市场的需求的角度去看这个花的品种的好跟坏。Taiwan is number one in the world for moth orchid seed resources and technology. To compete on the international market, however, it has to be able to guarantee quality and consistency of petal colour. So, how can orchid growers maintain a competitive edge and fulfil market needs? The answer lies in being able to rapidly reproduce orchids. When you choose a very beautiful, very unique, very unique flower, you want to 后代的种苗，所有的种苗跟这一颗妈妈完全一样，利用这个无菌的组织培养，那一个花梗可以大概可以繁殖到一万颗左右的所谓的分生，它的特性、开花的颜色、大小、开花的时间、花期的长短，接近一致。Taiwan's orchid growers no longer rely on good harvests and traditional agriculture for their daily bread. Standardized production has done for the orchid what Taiwan's chip foundries did for the computer, heralding an era of uniform quantities and prices. Like this, it's the same. All of them are eating. 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 This will earn money. This flower, if you have two flowers, you will earn money. 蝴蝶兰这个东西，它已经走到量化，它是国际商品。你看，以前包括日本，它最喜欢菊花，现在已经被蝴蝶兰取代，蝴蝶兰是第一名。你像欧洲走郁金香、走玫瑰，它现在不是，欧洲也是什么？蝴蝶兰第一名。美国现在只剩下圣诞红赢过蝴蝶兰，可是它只是圣诞节这个期间哦，全年度蝴蝶兰也是第一名。全世界已经认同这个花本身的它的丰富性、它的平价化，然后再来。
Hank Leo entered the industry just two years ago. Given the export prospects of the moth orchid, in recent years the number of Taiwan's growers has increased rapidly, as have production quantities and cultivation area. But as these growers have found, the international market is a fast-paced environment, and there is no time for relaxation. Because we do things like we do in the U.S. with the U.S. and 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 那设施就比较高的一个投资，比较高的一个技术，才会达到它，呃，稳定的一个生产供货，你才有办法去接所有的订单。你一定要把你的设备做好，帮你挑比较好的。这个设立海外行销公司，就是把台湾的触角伸到国外去，我们直接去打品牌，或者说我们到当地去设一个批发站，哦，把东西送到那里之后再卖给当地的农农民或是当地的消费者。那这样子把这样的建构起来，我们才不会说一天到晚在台湾等客人，我们必须要走出去。说种兰花可以说是自己跟自己竞争嘛，根本没有人跟你竞争啊，谁跟你竞争？对不对？你要自己跟自己竞争，你的品质好你就卖得掉，品质不好就卖不掉。如果你的园子干干净净，每一个都很健康，那谁不愿意跟你买？ The moth orchid has been taken in from the wild, and its growers have become entrepreneurs who, in combining technology with breeding techniques, have allowed the moth orchid to take wing and put down roots in all corners of the earth. The pride and glory of Taiwan. Holy is a small, unremarkable little town, with old, winding streets and a motley mix of buildings. Calm and peaceful, there is little to distinguish this place from other rural towns. Yet behind the walls of some of these buildings and iron sheds, one third of the world's saxophones are being produced. Zhang Zongyao of Liancheng Saxophones began making saxophones at the age of 13. His family has been in the business ever since his grandfather founded the company over 60 years ago. Today, there are around a dozen saxophone makers in Holi, and it's all thanks to Zhang Zongyao's grandfather, Zhang Liancheng. <laughs> 